Welcome back to Zone for Geeks. My name is Casey, and today we're going to be setting up a site-to-site -site VPN using the FortiGate firewall. Before we get started, I want to point out that I work a traditional 40 hour a week job, and all of my videos are 100% funded by me. So if you like what you see, consider using the affiliate links in the description below. Let me explain the problem I'm trying to solve. You see, years ago, I purchased an unlimited storage plan from Amazon for a single annual fee. It only took Amazon a few months to pull the offer and then send out an email stating that if you don't pay more, we're going to delete all of your data. Since I know that cloud storage is just storage on someone else's computer, I built my own. For years, I used the built-in Windows VPN tool to transfer files from computer to computer. The problem was twofold. First, the connection was never very stable. I would constantly have to manually reestablish the connection and oftentimes I had to restart the transfer over again. Second, that only worked if I wanted to go from computer to computer. I could add more computers, but that would just become a management headache. I tried third-party VPN clients such as NordVPN, but had the same problem that I had with Microsoft. I would constantly disconnect and at the time, there was no way to automatically reestablish the connection. I've been using FortiGate firewalls both professionally and personally for about five years and decided to pick up another one a few weeks ago. This firewall is located at my mother's house where I will have a backup NAS with an always on VPN connection. With that said, let's get started. Now, since I have a FortiGate firewall at both ends, I can use the site to site VPN wizard to create my tunnel. However, I recognize this might not be ideal for everyone, and even if you do have a FortiGate at both ends, you might want to make a custom VPN connection to give yourself more control over the tunnel. For that reason, I will be showing both methods. Check the description for bookmarks if you want to jump ahead. Before we get started, it is recommended that you put your ISP modem or router in bridge mode. What this will do is pass all of your internet traffic to your FortiGate firewall, and your modem or router will not manage any of that data. By doing this, you don't have to set up a VPN rule and access to both your firewall and modem. If something doesn't work right, it makes it a lot harder to troubleshoot when you're troubleshooting the connection to your router, but also your new VPN tunnel. As you can see here, I've set my router in bridge mode, and the WAN interface IP is the IP address provided by my ISP. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. I'm going to click on VPN, then IPsec Tunnels. Click Create New. For the name, I'm going to call it Home to Mom. I'm going to leave everything else as default. The remote IP address will be the IP address for my mother's internet. For the pre-shared key, I'm just going to use ABC123. My local interface will be my main LAN, so it's 10.1.1.0, and the remote subnet of my mother's house will be 192.168.1.0. My VPN tunnel has been created at my house. You can see the tunnel is still down, and that's because we haven't created it at my mother's house. Before we move over to my mother's firewall, let's take a look at what the FortiGate wizard created. You can see that it created both the inbound and outbound policy. It also created our static route. We can see this by checking out our firewall policy rules. Here you can see our inbound and outbound rules. We can also check out our addresses and see that two named addresses have been created. Okay, so I am done with my home firewall, so I am going to use remote software to connect to a computer at my mother's house and configure her VPN. Now we just need to do the exact same thing on this firewall. 
I'm going to give my connection a name, then click Next. I will enter my home IP address and pre-shared key will be ABC123. My local subnet will be my mother's local subnet and the remote will be my house. Notice that we have this little red arrow here. This is showing that our VPN tunnel is not up. We can see that by going to our IPsec tunnel page. In order to bring up my tunnel, I'm going to manually bring the tunnel up. To do this, click on your dashboard, then network. We need the IPsec widget, so click on add widget, Then locate the IPsec widget and click on the plus symbol. Now we can see our VPN tunnel. Now we click on the IPsec widget, right click on the VPN tunnel, click bring up, then all phase two selectors. Now you can see that our VPN tunnel is online. If we go back to my home network, we can see that the network is showing online. I can also access my mother's firewall by typing her IP address. We see here that I have both my firewall and my mother's firewall available through my network. Now I'm going to delete this tunnel and all of the rules and addresses that were created using the VPN wizard, and we're going to do this manually. Okay, so I've deleted all of the rules and addresses created by the FortiGate wizard. First thing I'm going to do is create a couple of addresses for my local and remote subnet. This will just make things a little easier. My local subnet, which is my home, will be 10.1.1.0. My remote subnet, which will be my mother's, will be 192.168.1.0. Now that that's done, let's create the tunnel. Just like before, we go to VPN and then IPsec Tunnels. We're going to create a new tunnel. Here we click Custom. My name is going to be VPN Home to Mom. Okay, don't get intimidated by this screen. The key here is that everything must match on both sides of the tunnel. In this case, I have access to both the local and remote firewalls, but I have run into issues where I was given the wrong phase one information and then the tunnel doesn't work if there's, a, if there's any mismatch. Okay, so here I set the IP address for my mother's ISP. I'm going to switch the interface to WAN and just like before, my pre-shared key is going to be ABC123. I'm going to switch the IKE version to 2, but leave everything else as default. You should change these based on your needs. Now, I could type in the subnet here, but since I already created the address object, I'm going to change this to named address and use that instead. I'll do the same thing for the remote address. Of course, our tunnel is not up because we haven't configured the other side. We also need to make a few more changes on this firewall. First, I want to create a static route. To do that, we're going to go to Network, then Static Routes. I'm going to click Create New. Now this is saying that all traffic bound for a specific IP or subnet should go out a specific interface. In this case, I'm going to say that all traffic bound for 192.168.1.0 should go out of the VPN tunnel. 
I'm going to pause the video here because I need to let you know that when creating your tunnel, it's very important that you don't have subnet overlaps. My mother's IP is in the 192.168.1.0 subnet. If my home IP was in the same subnet, then that would cause problems because my static route is saying that all traffic on the 192.168.0 should go through the tunnel. If the local and remote subnets were the same, then traffic that was actually meant for a local computer would instead be passed across the VPN tunnel. The same is true if you are setting up VPN for your employees. You have to realize that some might have a conflicting subnet on their home network. There are ways to work around that, but that's for another video. Let's continue configuring our VPN tunnel. The next thing we need to do is create our inbound and outbound rules. I'm going to create the outbound rule first. I'm going to give it a name. My incoming will be the primary LAN switch. My destination will be the VPN tunnel. The source network will be my local network, so the 10.1.1.0, and the destination will be my mother's subnet. We're going to enable all services, disable NAT, and we're done with our outbound connection. For our inbound connection, we do the same thing, just in reverse. Once again, we give our role a name. Our incoming traffic is going to be our VPN tunnel. Our outgoing interface will be our primary LAN. This time our source is my mother's subnet and my destination is my local subnet. We're going to enable all services and disable NAT once again. I should point out that this does not take into account any cybersecurity concerns. You might have a need to limit which IP addresses are available on your tunnel, or you might want to create a completely separate VLAN just for your VPN resources. That being said, we are done setting up our local firewall. Now I'm going to once again remotely connect to a laptop at my mother's house and access her firewall. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is set up my address objects. This is identical to what I did on my local firewall. Now we need to create our VPN tunnel. This will also be identical. I just need to change my IP address here to my home IP address. Now I'm going to create the static route. In this case, I'm sending all traffic bound for 10.1.1.0 to the VPN tunnel. Last thing we need to do is set up our firewall rules. This too will be the same as when we set up our local firewall. Notice the VPN tunnel is already up. That's because we're allowing some traffic to pass through. And we're done. 
Now if we check our IPsec widget, we can see our tunnel is online and ready to use. Coming back over to my local machine, I should be able to access 192.168.1.1. As you can see, I can access my mother's firewall. And that's how you set up a site-to-site -site VPN connection using a FortiGate firewall. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have a question or comment, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.